Hi Spinimators, I want to show how I animated the Spine Gem logo that I created on Blender. Then I rendered and separated layers and then I animated them on Spine. First I, I exported from Photoshop as we do with the script, the uh, Photoshop to Spine script, uh, regular settings, nothing different. Then I imported on Spine and then I started uh, rigging each part. The first thing that I usually do is to create like separated roots for each element. So here I am creating like a root for spine, one root for jam and one root for the liquid that surrounds it. Remember to name everything. Also remember to parent the slots to their bones. And I like to change the colors of the bones and the name of the bones, of course, to keep things organized and visually easy to access. Here we have just three elements, but this is a tip that helps a lot, is to isolate the elements that you are working with. In this case, I isolated the jam because I want to create the mesh for it. I always use trace, so it, it gives me like a basic structure for the mesh and then I start modifying the vertexes and put them where I want them to be. By using trace it saves some time and helps me to have an overall look of the mesh and decide where I want to put more or less vertexes. In this case I need a more dense mesh in terms of vertexes because this will deform like in a circular path. So if I have few vertexes uh, probably it will create like hard edges and it will not look organic as I want it to look. Now that I have my mesh created, I will create the path. It will be like a circular path. That will be the star of the show. When creating a path, try to look for the Bezier handles and try to build your path on a way that it will be like smooth and avoid to have sharp corners because the sharp corners will deform your mesh on a very weird way. The same way that I do with bones, I like to change the color so it can give me a more visual feedback when I am animating. In this case I'm using green over orange so it has like a good contrast and I can see the path easily. Now to create the bones that will drive the deformation of the jam, I usually create a very large bone and then I split it in smaller pieces. And then with all of them selected, I choose the path constraint and I change the mix parameter from tangent to chain scale. By doing that, the bones are now connected and they are following the path orientation. Next comes the skin process and it's very straightforward. Just select the bones that you want to influence your mesh. I like to use the smooth button so the weights are more balanced and more blended together. And it should work like right away. Uh, you will need to fix some weights maybe, but you can start animating to check if everything is deforming correctly right after you assign the weights to the bones. Actually, to refine the weights on the bones is much easier if you do it on animation mode because you will see it deforming in real time and you can do adjustment in real time as well. Now starts the more fun but also the hardest part on animation that is control the curves and adjust the timing to be exactly how do you want it to be. In this case, I want it to start very slow and give it like a very fast spin and then it goes back slow again so it creates a loop but it's not a loop with constant velocity it's a loop that it's more dynamic so it has acceleration and deceleration and visually this is much more appealing for me animation mode in spine is nice because you can do more than one thing at the same time like i am animating i am taking care of the time but at the same time i have like real-time feedback of how my mesh is deforming so I can do adjustments all the time so I can be sure the mesh is doing what I want it to do. Now let me start rigging the words. I want it to have like a very subtle 3D effect but not too much. In this case I didn't use the trace feature because I want it to be blocky so I want to control exactly the perspective and the aspect that I need so I opt for 
creating the vertex myself so I can control better the silhouette and the points that I want for the mesh to deform. To control the 3D effect, I created the, that classic setup with two bones and uh, transform constraints with negative values. So it creates like a parallax effect. So it's simple like that. And I tried many different uh, meshing setups because I started very simple with very few vertexes, creating like a box. But then I realized that I need more control over the edges of the word. So I came back and then I created more detail uh, set up with the mesh that like creates a contour more precise so I can control the parallax between the front and the back of the word with more precision. And then the animation was very simple, just an up and down movement with some rotation to break this up and down movement and create more drag. So it was not a complicated animation because I don't want it to get too much attention and be readable on the screen. For the GM word, I use pretty much the same setup for the mesh and also for the bones to create the parallax effect and control the back and the front of the word. The big difference here was on the animation of the word. I chose to do more like a stop motion effect, so the curves are not that smooth. I changed the curve to step it mode. After creating the movement that I wanted, I could make sure that the movement was okay, the up and down and the dragging effect with the rotations. Then I changed all the keys to step it and then it feels more like stop motion. And the nice thing here is the contrast between the different movements on the spine word, the jam word and the circular animation of the jam. After I have everything done with the correct timing and I was happy with the jam animation, I duplicated all the setup. I duplicated the bones and the constraints and everything. And then I took the mesh, then I separated and created two parts. One part for the drops that surrounds it and one part for the main mesh. By doing that, I had the option to create like an offset between the parts. And then the jam doesn't look like a single object, but it has some timing variation that makes the whole animation more appealing. And this is the final result. This animation was done for the Spine Jam Zero. That is an open class for my Spine Animation project that will be released soon. If you are watching this in January of 2024, I hope you like it. I hope you can join me on the courses. And of course, join me by subscribing to the newsletter so you can have access to all the information early and you can have access to special plans. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching and I see you soon.